Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to be going over installing and configuring a open LDAP LDAP server on Red Hat 7. This guide should also work for CentOS. I will not be configuring the LDAP client in this video as this procedure is much shorter. I will be doing it on its own. See the description up for more details. There will also be a link to a file with all of the steps I'm about to go over so you can follow that if you'd like to. In this video, uh, my domain is going to be kjl.local, so if you see that at all throughout this video, just replace that with your domain. So I've logged in here on my Red Hat 7 machine as root, so uh, if you do not log in as root, know that you'll need to run sudo for pretty much every single command here. Um, before we get started with installing LDAP, we're going to first check our network and hostname settings so as you can see this is my IP address if you see this come up or this network come up throughout the video uh, just note that you'll need to replace it with your IP address or network address and this is the hostname of my LDAP server so now we are going to actually install open LDAP and migration tools which you can do with yum So now we are going to generate a password for the LDAP administrator account. You'll see it as manager and you can do that with slap password. It works similar to the user password command, but in this case, see how we get a, a encrypted password value here. Copy that down and make note of it somewhere as we will need it later. We should now have a open LDAP directory under etc. We are going to go to the slap.d and then cn equals config directory. Once in here, there are two files we're going to be editing. First off, we will edit the OLC database equals to hdb.ldiff. And this is essentially a LDAP data interchange format file. So uh, once we open that, we are going to be changing a couple of the values that we'll be using for our uh, LDAP configuration. So the first off, our first one we'll need to change is the OLC suffix which will basically be our base DN. So in my case, the domain is kjl.local. So I'm going to be setting that. And then as you can see, this is the root DN. So this is going to be our LDAP manager account. Again, I'm just ad adjusting the domain so that it shows uh, the, the actual path for our LDAP account. So We'll also need to add the OLC root password, and this is going to be the encrypted password we generated with slapd. So just or pass, yeah, slapd password. So just copy that in there, and we are also going to be setting a path for a certificate file, and then a private key that goes with that certificate file. So in this case, I'm going to be putting it under the following directory, and then note that the file will be called. Uh, kjlldap.pem. In your case, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, it should have some sort of logical name, though. Uh, don't call it kjl.ldap.pem. Uh, just use whatever makes sense for your environment. And then, as you can see, I'm doing the same thing, but in this case, it's the kjlldapkey.pem. So, again, just make sure those names make sense for uh, your LDAP environment. And that is it for this file, so we will save it. And now we will be opening the OLC database equals one monitor dot LDIF file, and this is going to be our access file. We're only going to be changing one line here. Basically, this really long line takes up two lines. Uh, we're going to be changing the DC equals my domain DC com to the actual base DN of our domain, and that was set in the last file. So once you've done that, you can escape and right quit and exit. And now we will be verifying the configuration. We'll get some sort of a couple of checksum errors because we modified the files, but you should see uh, configuration 
our config file testing succeeded. If anything was wrong in those two files, you would have received an error here, so we are okay. So now we will start and enable slapd. And now we are going to copy a sample database file and change the user and group owner of the, the copied file. Okay, so now we are going to add three LDAP schemas, one for cosine, one for NIS, and one for INET org person. Once that's done, you should have something like this on your screen. Um, and now we are going to actually generate the uh, LDAP certificate and the LDAP private key using OpenSSL. So you can type out this fairly long command here. Just make sure to change the certificate file and the LDAP or the certificate key file name to match the file names that we set earlier in the uh, OLC database to file. Once you enter that, you should get something like this where you'll have to enter in like a location or some location information and company information. It doesn't query anything, so you can actually just make most of this up if you want to. Um, but I'm just going through and entering some generic information. We should now have a certificate and a private key in the following directory. Now we are going to change directories to the migration tools directory and we will make a copy of the com or migrate common ph you don't have to but i'm going to do that and then we will be editing the file in this file there's three values that we're going to have to change uh, the first one being the default underscore mail underscore domain if you want to, you could use forward slash NVI to search for these values. So as you can see here, uh, it's got this paddle.com. We're going to be changing that to our domain name. So in this case, kjl.local, but again, set it to whatever yours is. And then the same thing here with the default base. Make sure to have the domain component or DC values there. And then further down in the file, we're going to change this extended schema to one. And then that's all we're going to be saving in this file. So, or editing so we can save the file. And now we will be creating a base.ldif file. In this file, uh, you can copy most of the values from the text file that I'll have in the description of this video. But just make sure to change any of the domain component or domain related names uh, to ones that match your environment. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this. And as you can see, we have a uh, organizational unit for our users and a organizational unit for our groups. You don't have to do this part, but I'm gonna do it just so you could see 
uh, how the users get migrated over. I'm going to be adding some users to the system. So I'm just going to add a couple users here and set their passwords. And then I will add a couple groups as well. Now, if we cat or tail these files, you should see the users. Um, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, say for example, you wanted to collect only a couple users, you can grep for their user ID and their group ID values, and I'll put them into a file. We will then be importing that file into LDAP. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to grep for the users that start with the 10 for their UID and then I'm using wildcards to say any value between 0 and 9 uh, for the third digit and any value between 0 and 9 for the fourth digit. Uh, in this case I don't have that but this is just to kind of show uh, generally how you can search for a group of users and then I'm going to do the same thing for the etc group file and I'll put the groups into their own file as well. Okay, so now we have a file that contains our user information and a file that contains our group information. I'm going to use the migrate underscore password script to migrate or convert the uh, user file we just created into the .ldiff format that LDAP uses. And then we'll do the same thing uh, with migrate underscore group .pl for the group file. And then again we're converting that into the LDIF format that LDAP uses. Once you're done doing that, you should have something that looks like this. And you can see here that now we have all of the information that LDAP uses, such as object classes and home directories, specifications, and all that good stuff. And we can see the same thing for the groups. We have POSIX group and what members belong to it. So now we are going to actually import uh, these files, the base.ldiff, the users.ldiff, and the groups.ldiff to our LDAP. And you can do that with LDAP add. Um, what we're doing here is for the dash V D value, specify the distinguished name of the manager account. So as you can see, I have the CN equals manager and then followed by the base DN. And now we'll instruct it to look at the base.ldiff file. And this password is the LDAP administrator account password. It's the password you typed in for the slapd command, not the actual encrypted value. And you should get something like that. And now we will do the same thing, but change the name of each file for the users and the groups LDIF files. And now we've imported our base, our users, and our groups to LDAP. This next part is optional. Uh, what I'm going to do is add some of our users to groups, so you don't need to do that uh, to set up the LDAP server. But what I'm doing is copying the distinguished name of the group that I'm going to edit, create a file called usergroup.ldiff, and then enter in the following information. So as you can see, we are modifying the group, and we are going to be changing the member UID and adding these two users. You can do the same thing, adding multiple users as, as many as you want, and then save that file. Now we will use the LDAP modify command to modify the existing group.
and this time we're going to point it to the new user group file. If you want to query your LDAP configuration, you can use the LDAP search command. So if you want to query for users, you can do UID equals and then the username and then the base DN. And as you can see, all the user information comes up for this user. And you can do the same thing for group, but change it to instead of UID, CN for common name, and then the group name. And here's the group. And you can also see that the two users we just added to the group are listed. And that's basically it. Our LDAP server is now set up and configured. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to be doing how to set up a client for LDAP access as well as exporting a user's home directory over NFS. So that way you can log in and have a user's home directory on a remote machine. If you have any comments about this video, leave them down below. Hope this video was helpful for you. And as always, thanks for watching.